All right, I think we're, we're live. Um, so welcome everyone to our, our most recent um, virtual IT ha hangout. Um, today I'm very, so my, my name's Ian Scarrett. I work at the Eclipse Foundation and, and been helping a lot with the Eclipse IoT community. Um, and I'm going to be your, your host today for, for our, our meetup. Um, today we've got uh, Maddie Benalé. Um, who is a PhD student from from LAS in Toulouse, France? But um, also for this presentation, um, he's the project leader for the Eclipse OM to M project. And um, Maddie, welcome, welcome to our, our meetup. Hello. Th How thank are you? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. So I'm looking really looking forward to 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 the presentation about OM to M and and kind of what's going on in the world of of service platforms around it. Kind of things like Etsy and one to M. So, um, without further ado, I will turn it over to you and and um, looking forward to the presentation. Okay, so let's start uh, quickly with uh, uh, the slides because I have uh, a couple of uh, demonstration uh, to show about the OM to M. So. So, do you see my screen? I do indeed. Okay, so uh, I represent uh, the OM2M project, which is uh, an open source implementation of the smart uh, M2M standard, which is pre previously called the Etsy M2M standard. So uh, OM2M provides an open source implementation uh, to enable interoperability between vertical uh, application domains. So. Uh, we know that uh, in M2M and I IoT, uh, there is many domains and uh, many technologies, and which is very good for M2M. But at the same time, uh, there is uh, a big drawback, which is the vertical fragmentation. In fact, the current M2M marketplace is extremely fragmented, which has increased the research and development cost in each specific domain. So. There is many uh, efforts uh, around the world in different level of the M2M uh, infrastructure to try to provide standards. According to the Global Standards Collaboration M2M Task Force. So the uh, smart M2M standard is a uh, uh, trying to provide a horizontal service platform to support uh, vertical uh, applications. So uh, the main goal here is uh, to enable, for example, a, a presence sensor to be used by uh, home automation uh, uh, applications to switch on a lamp, for example, and at the same time to be used by security applications to detect intrusions. So the standard should uh, support all these uh, kind of scenarios and try to uh, include all the common requirements uh, for the different domains. So now let's uh, move to OM2M. OM2M, as I said, is an open source implementation of the Smart M2M standard and is a member of Eclipse IoT Working Group. We have actually many interesting parties, like some telecom operators like uh, Orange, E-Device, etc. We have many users around the world, and we try to collaborate with uh, the existing uh, IoT uh, Eclipse uh, community, especially uh, the uh, Pau Mosquito uh, California, uh, for interworking with uh, this uh, with uh, this kind of uh, uh, devices. Uh, regarding uh, the uh, interfaces, we are collaborating with Eclipse, SCADA, and BERT to provide efficient uh, visualization and uh, uh, control uh, interfaces. And uh, on the uh, platform, we are using Equinox. And now we are looking on a concierge to provide uh, uh, an efficient, uh, lightweight uh, uh, OSGI uh, kernel. So actually, uh, the OM2 website is live. We have many tutorials. Uh, to show how to uh, create a new plugins, how to use OM2M. Um we try to simplify the standard. We provided many, uh, let's say, um, simple requests. That means we don't need to read the standard to understand how the OM2M um works, work, how to provide interoperability within a heterogeneous and complex system. 
So this is, uh, let's say, our architecture uh, that show where we are working now. So OM2M uh, is provided on the uh, server uh, part, okay, and also on the gateway. So uh, the gateway uh, can interwork with several protocols. Uh, actually, we did the MQTT uh, interworking, and we can uh, communicate with the uh, Greenhouse Eclipse IoT demo. We have interworking with FitGets, which is a specific technologies. Uh, we are working on the Zigbee is almost finished, and we will try to publish this as soon as possible. Uh, we have also six low-band devices connected to OM2M, and we worked also on KNX, and uh, we uh, want also to publish the KNX interworking proxy on uh, on the Eclipse uh, Git repository. So here we see that we have heterogeneous devices connected to the gateway, and then the gateway communicate using very simple. Uh, communication based on RESTful API, and uh, we support COPE and HTTP. And then uh, other applications can be end users, devices, data analytics, CADA interfaces can use also HTTP and COPE to get the data. So here we try to hide the complexity of heterogeneous devices and enable uh, an application or a user just by sending a GET request to get the data and to send a simple POST request to switch on a device. So this architecture, let's say, uh, show exactly where uh, we are fo focusing now. And uh, of course, in the future, we'll try to add new uh, technologies. So, so let's zoom on uh, uh, OM2M. So OM, the standard defines uh, a couple of uh, services which uh, are required for uh, each application domain. Uh, such as application enablement, security, remote entity management, reachability, addressing repository, interworking proxy, generic communication, communication selection, and so on. And uh, it defines also some optional services, and each one can add its own services as a plugin to the platform. So we can see that here, that in the server, or in the gateway, or even on the device, we can have this service layer, and application will use this service to interact with each other. It means that we don't have an ad hoc or a direct communication between applications. So here, which is on green, is the generic uh, or the common service layer, and applications can use these services to interact and do many advanced uh, services. OK, so each service capability layer, uh, can, as I said, can be deployed on the server gateway and the device and provide uh, primitive services. Everything is done using primitive services to do complex scenario. Primitive services can be, for example, a uh, uh, creation of the resource, uh, subscription, uh, discovery, uh, application registration, group management, uh, access, rights, access right authorization, and so on. And everything is done using this resource tree means that we have in uh, each gateway or each server this kind of resource tree. It means information is structured using a normalized way, so an application can uh, easily uh, discover the information and get it. So to make it simple, uh, in the next slide I have an example of how these resources can be used to simplify communication between applications. Here I have a, a smart meter, it can be a constraint device, we have a gateway, a server, and a user with a smartphone that uh, interested in getting the data without caring of uh, uh, the technologies behind the gateway. So the, the smart meter can uh, use HTTP or co-op, or if it's not possible, we will provide an interworking proxy to deal with this constraint device to create this kind of resources. So it's very simple. The smart meter will create an application resource here. And in this application, we can uh, have one or more containers to just to structure the data. So we can have one container to put the metadata related to the smart meter, the manufacturer, the uh, type, uh, profile, and so on, location maybe, and another container to store the payload or the events or the measurement, so to have a history of the uh, generated or the measured data. And that's all. So here, 
a user can uh, discover the device by reading its descriptor and then just subscribe or get the data f from this uh, resource. And okay, this is the main building blocks uh, that we are uh, currently developing in OM2M. So uh, it's based on OSGI runtime. We have the core, which is the main module. Module. Uh, we have two communication. A bind protocol binding HTTP and COPE. For interworking proxy, we have MQTT, ZigBee, Kinex, and six Lopan. We worked on OMADM and Lightway M2M. And for security, actually, we support TLS, but we try to provide the TLS PSK, which is more efficient and more lightweight for Internet of Things. And of course, in our lab, we are doing research, so we pro we add new plugins to do. Uh, advanced uh, feature like uh, improving quality of services, adding self-management capabilities, improve the, route, the routing, and so on. Means everyone can add its own plugins to uh, the system. So uh, the particularity of uh, OM2M is that the core is protocol independent and also technology independent. Here an example. Uh, we receive an HTTP request. Okay, so we see the uh, uh, IP address, the HTTP verb, etc. Then we have a mapping module that uh, convert this to a generic structure. Okay, so we convert get to retrieve, a post to create, and so on. Uh, the representation to an object, and we deal with this information independently of the protocol. So we can, after that, retarget it to another machine. We handle it. We do persistency, etc. Then, once we have the response, the response is also generic, and it will be converted to HTTP. Okay, so we can add the uh, we have uh, OK, so it will be uh, translated to two zero zero, and using the same way, we can uh, make a mapping to uh, cope. So it's just binding a conversion, and the main core of OM to M still working independent of any protocol and technologies. So this is just to zoom to the core. The core uh, includes the controllers and the persistency. Uh, so we can uh, uh, handle notifications. We can announce resources. We deal with all other plugins, like uh, for device management, for interworking proxy. Uh, we can have different database. All the main f f features or the functions are included on the core plugin, which, as I said, are independent of any protocol. So, so here I uh, have some examples uh, to to better understand understand how the resource tree and the rest for architecture of OM to M works. So let's suppose we have a smart metering server and a smart meter device. Okay, so the, the green part is the service layer and the blue part is the application layer. So, first we have an application which is electricity processing applications, okay, uh, deployed on the uh, smart metering server. Then we start a smart meter. So we have uh, a mutual authentication between the smart meter and uh, the server. So we can see here that each uh, part uh, received a request and uh, created the required resource to be able to reach the other, respectively. And finally, we, we will deploy now uh, an application on the smart meter, okay, using uh, post simple re rest request, like as I as I mentioned it here. And then we create a container for the data. Here I will not uh, create a descriptor. I will do it simple. And then we push the data, the measurement here. So it can be uh, 30 uh, watt. And here we can send the get and receive the data. Or we can uh, get the data in an asynchronous way. So we create a subscription with, with our contact uh, address. And uh, once we have a new event, uh, our application will be uh, automatically notified on the uh, contact URL. 
So in, the, in this example, we see that the data is stored on the smart meter. But we can have another scenario where the data is uh, stored uh, in, a, in a centralized server. So we have the same example. We have our uh, electricity processing application that creates its applications. So then, just to improve and uh, have a nice feature, this application can subscribe to uh, new uh, authenticated gateway or devices, just to anticipate new uh, new gateways or new meters. So now the smart meter is started. It creates its resources here, okay, and this. And our application is notified. It means once a new electricity meter is deployed, we will receive notifications, and then we we can uh, deal with it. So the application is created on the uh, smart meter, and instead of creating the data container here, we can uh, create it on the centralized smart metering server and push the data there. Okay, we can suppose that we don't have enough memory on the smart meter. And uh, finally, uh, all applications uh, can uh, gather data from this position. So this is two ways to uh, to deal with uh, with OM2M architectures. So uh, this this is uh, for the representation uh, that is for the presentation. Now uh, we can move to the uh, demo. So uh, we have actually uh, a server started in my machine, M2M server. And uh, I will show you uh, what I have. I'm looking for the uh, interface of Google Hangout. OK. Do you see me in? Yes. Yes. Sorry, yes. we don't see your. Yeah, so we don't see your your screen. We just see you. Yes, because I want to show uh, the device I have now. So okay. I have a, a BeagleBone Black, uh, in which I deployed uh, Gateway, OM2M Gateway. I have the server in my machine. I'm, it's connected you using uh, an Ethernet cable, network cable, and to my Gateway, I have uh, specific technologies. Okay which is the feed gates. So here it's not uh, uh, a PC or a computer or a microcontroller. It's just a hub that enables me to connect some sensors. So I have here a temperature and the luminosity sensors. And I have a two relay to control uh, these two LEDs, OK? It means that here I have this kind uh, connected using a USB. Great. Let's see. Okay. So it's connected using USB to the bigger bar. Okay. My goal is to uh, try to uh, take the data from the feed gets technologies, put them to the OM to M3, and enable other applications to get this data in most uh, in the easiest way. Okay. So now I'll uh, put the address uh, of my uh, server here. My Okay, I'll uh, switch the screen. You gonna share your screen? Yes, I'm. Uh, let's share it. Okay, there it is. I think it's okay now. Uh, yep, we see the um, Eclipse logo. And okay. now you see my uh, yep. browser. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so here uh, we uh, pro we implemented this interface, which is not dedicated to end users, but it just to it, it's for developers to see uh, the resource evolution and to uh, understand more the standard and see what happens when we send the REST folder request. So here uh, we can see all the standardized resources. Here, SELS is a resource that uh, contains all the auto authenticated gateways to my server. So we, I can see that I have a gateway here, gateway service capability layer. And uh, I can see all the application deployed in my 
server. So I can, I, I can see that I have many applications now. And I have other resources like uh, groups, access rights, subscriptions, discovery. All these are standardized. It means application know exactly where to find this information and how to deal with it and how to understand it. Because also the for the exchange exchange format is standardized. So here in my server I have uh, some applications. Okay. For example, let's take this one. It's Eclipse Greenhouse Ben Light. I have two containers, as I mentioned. The first one is for the metadata. It's called a descriptor and the data. Let's see the descriptor. You can see that it's a light. I can do on off. Uh, uh, I can get the data. Like this, it's off now. I can switch on the lamp and switch uh, off the lamp. So what's this? This is an interworking proxy with the MQTT. It's all the application discovered automatically from the Mosquito broker. So if I go here, or maybe this, I can see this uh, greenhouse, which is, uh, I think, now uh, in uh, Benjamin house, OK, uh, speaking MQTT. And I created all the uh, application here. So it means I can, using HTTP uh, requests, I can, uh, let's say, switch on the lamp. OK, I send the request. And we can see that the lamp is switched on. And I can switch off the lamp. So here I have a just, uh, I have a simple JavaScript program sending HTTP requests to my server, and the server uh, convert the request to MQTT request and send in to the Mosquito broker, and uh, the lamp is switched on. When I receive the response, it's converted back to uh, HTTP. It means that now I'm switching on and off the lamp, but I don't even know that it's MQTT uh, that is used here. OK, so now let's return back. I say that we, I have on the server, I have a gateway. I can see the IP address of the gateway. So this is the IP address of my Beaglebone Black uh, microcontroller or micro PC. And I can uh, go to fetch inside the Beaglebone. It, it's very, it's totally seamless for me. It's like browsing a website. I did not change my IP address, but now all my requests, my requests are retargeted to the Beaglebone. If I click here, I will see all the applications deployed on the uh, Beaglebone Black in a seamless way. So technically, I send a request to the server, HTTP request, the, re the server retarget my request to the Beaglebone Black, and the Beaglebone Black handle the request, and uh, the response is returned to the server and to my uh, AJAX interface. So I have many uh, sensors here. I have the temperature, two containers, one descriptor, one data. So the descriptor contains, I can get the state from uh, the bigger bone. It's 25 degrees Celsius. It's pretty warm now. And uh, we can, if we want to see the, uh, the data, so we can we have, okay, we have this information here, which is for the history. I can switch on off the two LEDs, okay? And uh, actually, what's happening is that the bigger bone is converting my HTTP request to the feed gets, switch on or get the data and convert it back to HTTP in a seamless way. Uh, now, let's move to this part, okay? So here. I have my uh, greenhouse demo, and here I have the Cooper uh, Cope plugin uh, of uh, Firefox. Okay, and I can put the same URI with the uh, Cope uh, port because, as I said, the server and the gateway are listening on HTTP, but also on Cope. It means that I can have an application that speaks Cope and can use the same uh, URI to control the light. So let's send this scope request to my server, OK? And we can see that uh, the lamp is switched on, because I sent uh, on here. Let's do it again. OK. So now we can see that the lamp is switched on, and I can uh, switch off the 
So what's happened here? I say my application speaks scope. I send the scope request to the server. The server retarget my request to the uh, Mosquito browser, and the browser, the Mosquito broker, it send it, of course, using MQTT to the greenhouse. The greenhouse switches on the lamp, and the request is returned back. And I receive it at the end a scope request. So make it. Uh, clear. Let's use curl, a simple curl uh, client here. Okay. So what? Just to switch on the lamp, I'm using this request. Okay. And to get the data from to, to get the data from the uh, feed gets, can send the get, and I have my data 27 degrees Celsius. I have two simple curls. The first one, send the the request is converted to MQTT and switched on the lab. The second one, it's HTTP request, but it's converted to feed gets technologies and get the temperature and return it back uh, to me. So this is the console of the server, and this is the console of the gateway. OK, so let's switch off the Benjamin lab. Good. Uh, um, I finished almost my uh, my demo. I can I have uh, two minutes, so I can uh, show you uh, another uh, uh, nice stuff that we have here. So I will uh, start a new gateway. Okay. With uh, a different uh, ID, so it authenticated to my uh, gateway. Let's move this here. Okay. So if I uh, return back to my server and check, so I, I we see that we can we have now two gateways, and I can move to the uh, new one. So it's GSCL two gateway two and. You can see that I don't have any application now. And if I start the sample plugins, which has ID 28, I create this nice uh, simulated uh, lamp uh, application. So I can switch on the lamp here. I can use the group uh, feature of OM2M to group these two lamps together in the high level uh, application. OK, I can control them. And we can see now that I have uh, two applications and one virtual, which is lamp all to control uh, both of lamp together. And we can see that they have the same uh, structure, the descriptor and the data. Okay, and they can get the state. It's false. I can get direct state. Means I'm I will take it directly from the sensors. I can also switch on the lamp. So we can see here that if I uh, toggle the lamp, I can control it. So it means each user is connected to internet, can just put the URI of the server, send HTTP request or COPE request to control this simulated lamp. And we, have, we provide this on the, uh, on the, on the uh, our tutorials. So uh, we will find a full a full tutorial uh, with all the necessary uh, source code. So just put eclipse.org slash om2m or om2m.org. And uh, you can see how to download, how to configure, how to start up. We have the web interface, how it works. We try to explain it uh, in a simple way. And we have the REST API describing this example with uh, the simulated lamp, how to create an application, a container, descriptor, data, how uh, to subscribe to a resource? Okay, so we can see this uh, this example here with uh, with the subscriptions and the notification received. Okay, Ian, I don't know if you have more times because I can show other uh, nice stuff. I, I I think this has been great. Um, I think cool. why don't we? Um, so I'd like to kind of leave some room for questions. Um, but my mic's not on. Let me get. Is my mic on here? Can you hear me, Maddie? 
Yes, I can okay, hear you. Sorry. Um, so, so no, no, I think this is great. So, um, for questions, unfortunately, the it looks like the Q and A is not working on this Hangout. So, what I'd suggest if people have questions, just email me at ian i a n at eclipse dot org, um, and we'll we'll try and um, get them answered uh, in the next uh, next five minutes or so. Um, but so so, Maddie, why don't we? Can we just talk a bit about one M to M, or or I guess it's called Smart M to M now? Um, can you talk a bit more, kind of where they're where they're at with that process, and and can what what we can expect to see from there? Yes. Uh, to to make it clear, uh, the Smart M to M is equal to Etsy M to M. They changed the name to put to choose. Uh, more sexy one. It means Smart M2M is similar to Etsy M2M. Okay. But 1M2M is the new uh, standard, the global standard, uh, which actually released. There is uh, uh, specifications available uh, for feedback, okay? And the first release will be uh, published in uh, January, okay? Okay. So, um, I am involved in the 1M2M standardizations, and we want that OM2M will be the basis of 1M2M. It means we try to move from smart M2M to 1M2M, because 1M2M is global. Uh, we have more than 230 members, uh, including uh, the seven most important SDO working right. on uh, M2M standardization. and. I can say that actually 1M2M is uh, take, taken, let's say, 80% from Etsy. Okay. We have the RESTful architecture, we have the same resources, some name is changed, there is a new interesting feature, but the main core is uh, the smart M2M standard. Okay. So, so you think um, moving om to m over to, to 1M2M is not going to be uh, a big deal? No, it's not a big deal. And in 9 of December, there is uh, the O1, the one M to M showcase that will be held in uh, Antipolis, in Sofia Antipolis, in France. Okay, right. and we will present uh, our, let's say, partial implementation of one M to M based on O M to M. Okay. okay. So, uh, it's very easy for us to move to one M to M because uh, the main core is is the same. Right. And so, who, who who do you see um, using something like one OM to M or one M to M? Like, um, what, where, 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 what type of deployments do you see? What type of customers do you see for for this type of service platform? Yes, actually, uh, many uh, telecom operators are uh, involved and uh, are interested. As I mentioned, uh, like Orange uh, are uh, interested in OM to M. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, we have service uh, companies like Panser, Pan Service, or uh, hardware companies like eDevice are interested and are using OM2M actually. Okay. okay. So the scenarios are for eHealth, for eDevice, for example. Right. Uh, we have also Italte that is using OM2M. Interesting. All uh, oh, M2M can be used in a, I can say that there is three different uh, ways to use OM2M. There is companies which has heterogeneous devices in their own solution. So they use OM2M to have this interoperability in their own solution. They don't care of uh, vertical fragmentation and so on. Another way is uh, to have a platform that can be instantiated or deploy it in different domain. I can use OM2M in e-health or in home automation scenarios, it will work. And there is other, uh, let's say, organism interested in uh, interoperability between vertical domains. It means we have two actors from two different domains that want to, sh want to share data. They can use OM2M to, to, to collaborate and communicate together. Okay. You see? Yep, no, no, make, makes perfect sense. Um, so just, uh, it just as a reminder, people, if you have a quick question, if you want to send me a quick email, I apologize that the Q and A is not working, but if you send an email to Ian at Eclipse.org, um, 
we'll try and get it answered uh, as, as quickly as possible. So in, in terms of, uh, so you, you kind of, you support um, six low pan, um, co-op, MQTT, what, what other standards do you see adding in to OM to M? Uh, I know that uh, Bluetooth low, low energy mm -hmm. is a very good uh, initiative. Uh, we are uh, looking at uh, Thread, the solution of Google. Okay. Okay. And actually, we have uh, a smart building in uh, LAS in Toulouse. Okay. Right. With, uh, positive energy and so on. Speaking mode bus. So Interesting. We, okay. uh, we will try to integrate these uh, these the yeah, specific yeah. technologies. For 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 device management, have you looked at uh, lightweight M to M? The OMA. Uh, yes. You know, before we worked with Koniki, which is an Eclipse project with right. the Google server, and uh, we uh, implemented the interface with the OMA DM protocol. And uh, but now we know that it's not more uh, maintained the the OMA DM so. Uh, I know that m many persons uh, discussed it with us in the forum, and uh, we provide to them our implementation, but it's not published in uh, the Git repository. Yeah. But I know that actually uh, we are moving to the lightweight M2M uh, yeah. solutions, and of course we we are looking uh, on on this to to integrate it because right. the standard define specification to interface with uh, this protocol for device right. management. They right. do not, it do not re reinvent the wheel for the device management. Yeah. Okay. No. Interesting. So, so, um, so I, th I thank you very much for for the for the um, presentation. Why don't you bring up your your um, the web page? And so, if people have questions, should they just send uh, an email to the mailing list or? I think uh, you can send an email uh, to the mailing list. Okay. I can see my screen. You, do you see it now? Um, yes. Yeah. So here uh, we have you, you can mailing go to yeah. the mailing list, subscribe and uh, exchange with us. You can also uh, use the forum. Okay. We are uh, active, so we can send your uh, issue here, and we try to uh, to investigate and try to to help. Uh, Excellent. Okay. Perfect. Okay. That that's um. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, it's eclipse.org slash om2m, or you can put just om2m.org, and it uh, redirects to uh, the website. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Maddie. Um, I, I appreciate um, you taking the time, and um, certainly le learned a lot about om2m. Thank take you, care. Ian. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye.